Shanghai based and founded in 2014, Hosai Technology specializes in LiDAR technology for autonomous driving and ADAS. As one of the leading companies in the industry, Hosai showcased some of its newest high performance, reliable, and low cost 3D sensors expected to soon go into mass production at CES 2022. So I'll give you two versions of the answers. The official answer is that you want to design things in the automotive grade fashion.、Mm -hmm. You need to follow all those、uh, safety quality standard and make it mass producible. In the previous stage, most companies are making we call that samples in smaller quantity, high quality stuff. And then in the later stage, when we go to mass production, you're doing still high quality, but you're doing super quantity. We're talking about going from like ten thousand units at best to easily million units a year. So it's a huge leap there.、Uh, the unconventional answer I would give is that oftentimes people think about quality as a problem of screening the bad ones.、Uh, we actually think quality entails a lot more than just controlling the consistency consistency of a product,、mm -hmm. but it's more about designing something. That's durable in the first place,、right. which is a very different topic. I would say, oftentimes people underestimate the power of being able to design something that's durable, elegant to begin with. Basics is application specific. It's about combining a large number of components. Into a small integrated part, with with a design that's specifically geared to serve a very specific application. The reason you want to do ASICs usually is the following: first, it's tailored to your product need. Essentially, get rid of the unnecessary parts. Second, it's highly integrated, meaning that you don't have to assemble so many hundreds of things into the same thing, which is a messy and a difficult process. Third, you will be able to print and copy and paste as many as possible. It's a very difficult process to do that、mm -hmm. because usually it's a lot easier just to plug and play with everything off the shelf. That's what most companies do. But once you figure out a good enough design, you want to lock in that design and make it easy to copy and paste.、Right. That's what we call the ASIC design process. It's a very lengthy process. Usually, it takes anywhere from twelve to eighteen or even longer time. For you to do one iteration, so you really have to be be very confident, knowing that this is something I want to copy and paste、mm -hmm. pick, or duplicate, because it's very possible that you actually had a bad design to begin with, but once you get it right, the benefits is huge, because now you have a magic way to easily, quickly, efficiently, consistently, and affordably duplicate. It's about performance. It's rel about reliability, but more importantly, it's about cost. That's very attractive to most of the customers. The first is detection range.、Uh, we're at 200 meter, and、uh, which is significantly longer than most of the competitors in this product definition. And the other is what we call a、uh, point density. And also known as a resol resolution,、mm -hmm. and、uh, we are at more than 1.5 million points per second, which is also significantly higher than the competition. The uniqueness about our current AT products,、uh, in the end, it reflects in all the specs,、mm -hmm. but under the hood, we're using a new generations of semiconductor technologies in each of those categories. We just recently announced our collaboration with Lumentum, who is famous for make, making the 3D sensors for、uh, Apple's iPhones, and we're using a lot of their consumer electronics technologies into automotive, and we're the first one to do that for long-range lidar. And we're also using、uh, our third-generation proprietary ASICs. And、as I said, to integrate a lot of those components into very few chips. So the AT128 was primarily designed 
to do the ADAS advanced driving assistance system. Um, people will be putting at the front bumper of a passenger vehicle, or sometimes at the roof, uh, or sometimes on the side. Mm -hmm. And this is the typical application, really because it has a, such a tiny form factor. It's very easily integrated into the car body design. Yeah. And that, that will be the main application. Well, on top of it, because it's super affordable, a lot of other applications who didn't get to enjoy the benefit of LiDAR before are now considering, considering using LiDARs for the first time. Uh -huh. Because we were using ASICs for a lot of the different new generation LiDARs, yeah. we are bringing the cost down significantly across our platform. Mm -hmm. So when we do that, it just opens up doors for quite different applications to be able to carry lightweight, a small package, high performance LiDARs to different applications. It's just full of imagination and that's kind of what we wanted to do. Our company's mission is empowering robotics. We wanted to build the platform technology that empowers a variety of new generations of different robotics applications. All right, hi Frank. Um, Hello. We saw that this is a really cool drone over here um, with a LiDAR on it, and we heard that the XT series has the highest precision among all the LiDARs um, that you have. So could you tell us a little bit more about this series and their application scenarios um, yeah. and their functionalities? Yeah, of course. So we're at CES 2022 this year. We're showing the XT series. So like you mentioned, this is the highest precision, highest accuracy for this flavor of LiDAR on the market. So on the distance measurements, you're getting about one to two centimeters of precision, and you're getting the full 360 field of view. So on the drone, they only use about 90 degrees or maybe 120 degrees mm -hmm. to scan downwards. But if you're looking for point cloud precision and clarity, uh, the XT is really the way to go. Okay. Um, and what about this cute little robot oh, yeah. right over here? Yeah, so this robot is from our partner, Kudan. They actually focus on the software, so the navigation software is what we're showing here. But again, they're using the XT, and it's because of that precision and the core point cloud performance of that sensor really stands out. What other um, application scenarios do you have for yeah. these LiDARs? I actually focus, my team focuses on all the non-automotive segments. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be mining, agriculture, last mile delivery. Where we're seeing a huge pickup right now is in the logistics space, the warehousing, uh, autonomous forklifts, and also AGVs, automated guided vehicles. That's where we're seeing in the medium term a big pickup for this type. So the robot, we're just kind of uh, displaying proof of concept. But with the navigation software and the sensor, the LiDAR sensor together, you really get uh, some high precision point clouds and you can also do your classification. So is it a person? Is it an object? And then where is the robot? Mm -hmm. Within your space, the localization aspect of it. All right, so hi Rob, nice to meet you. Um, I see that there are multiple LiDARs that's on display on this car right now. Could you tell us a little bit about what they do and how they're different from each other? Okay, so we've outfitted this vehicle with multiple sensors. Um, up top, you'll see our long range and our 128. And it's a 360 degree mechanical rotating LiDAR. And it's, it's much longer range for over the road applications for trucking, for automotive, um, robo taxis and things like that. On the side, we have our short range up to 20 meter um, QT, 128. So this actually will help sense things that are very close to the vehicle because the, the long range one has a whole different function. Um, and then we also have our AT128, which is an automotive grade sensor that we're moving forward with for L3 autonomous driving. And this one has about 120 degree field of view. But the nice thing is that it's smaller, it's automotive grade, and we can package it in many locations. 